There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of... This is the Deptford Trilogy by Robertson Davies. I am here to review the first novel in that trilogy, Fifth Business. So I'm going to put the book down because I hate bind-ups and it's heavy. And put the GIF here, Fifth Business, which is, I believe, was a 1971 novel by Robertson Davies. And the novel that he is best known for and that established his literary reputation in Canada... I resisted reading this novel since it was published. No, I was only six years old or five years old when it was published. But I resisted reading it or anything by Robertson Davies until the fall of 2020 because he was such an old poop when I was coming into social political consciousness. He was probably in his 70s, maybe even in his 80s when I became aware of him. And he was everywhere on bookish media radio, CBC, radio, book shows, and everywhere, giving his very socially conservative opinions about feminism, and I don't remember how far his idiotic, offensive opinions extended. Did he ever opine about immigration? I don't remember that he was racist or homophobic, but he certainly loved to give the feminists a hard time in his interviews and stuff, and he was really persona non grata in the literary circles that I traveled in. No, that doesn't sound right. Uh, he, he just had a bad reputation among people of my generation as being an old poop. So I refused to read him. And I had, it was a very gentle argument, but I had a running argument over 30 years with one of my very best friends, who happens to be my father's first cousin, Mary Jean, about Robertson Davies. Not that she agreed with his opinions, but she said, Sean, just read his books. You, they're wonderful. You're going to love them. And I said, I'm not going to read him. So finally, because of a reading project that I took on for 2020, which I'm not going to explain here. I'll put the link to the video in the show notes. I finally read Fifth Business. And I am delighted to tell you that the book itself is not sexist. In fact, some of the male characters express quite enlightened views about women. I mean, we're not talking male feminist or anything too extreme, but uh, for the, its time, I thought that the book was not sexist or misogynist in the story or the characterization. And the novel started out wonderfully. Childhood in small town Ontario, Dunstable. Dunstable is the narrator. I guess when your name is Robertson, you can name your characters equally geekily. Dunstable, nine years old, having a snowball fight with his friend Boyd Staunton. Boyd throws a snowball at him that misses and hits the Baptist minister's young wife, who's very pregnant, knocks her to the ground and uh, triggering a premature delivery of her baby. That is the opening scene, and that knocked my socks off. I thought it was just incredibly well-written, vivid, and engaging, and I was hooked. And so I thought, oh, okay, well, I guess this was the right time for me to read the book. And the magic of that opening premise held my interest for a long way into the novel. And I'm sorry to say it didn't get me all the way to the end. I didn't bail. I finished the novel, but I gave it only one star out of five because I thought it completely botched the promise of its beginning. The first thing that started to bug me, and one of the major flaws of this novel, is that it's structured as an epistolary novel. It is a letter to his headmaster. He was the assistant headmaster at a boys' school in Ontario, and he has just recently retired. And he didn't appreciate the way he was humiliated by, I believe it was the younger teachers on staff at the retirement party, something like that. And so he wrote this 260-page letter to his former boss, the headmaster, telling him his life story. And that was ridiculous because of the things that were contained. Very sexual matters, very personal secrets, and, and so on. It was a hokey structure. 
obviously most readers could suspend their disbelief and just go with it. Ultimately, I couldn't. But much more serious than that, we follow the characters from that small town opening of the novel, Dunstan, Percy Boyd, the, guy, the kid who threw the snowball, Mrs. Dempster, the, the young Baptist preacher's wife who gets hit by the snowball, and the baby that is born prematurely, who is Paul Dempster. And the story continues following those characters right until the end of the novel, and presumably the one, some of them at least, the ones that don't die, into the second and third novels of the Deptford trilogy. But to me it was a fatal flaw that especially the three boys, the narrator Dunstan, oh, I'm calling him Dunstan, he changed his name, but Dunstable was his childhood name, right? Dunstable, Percy Boyd and Paul. Their adult characters had no characterological connection to their childhood selves at all. And when that happens in a work of fiction, it just drives me crazy. Like, there was no continuity of character. I mean, sure, we grow and we change and we are not the same people we were when we're nine years old, but there is some characterological genealogy in our development and there was none in this book. And that's that angered me. I couldn't see the boys in the men. So, it sucked. Even Mrs. Dempster, who was a young housewife, a young preacher's wife at the opening of the novel, there are reasons, plot-related reasons, that I'm not going to reveal here, why her character kind of changed. But there was such a disjuncture between the childhood part of the story and what happened to these characters and who they became and what kind of people they were as adults that it pissed me off even more serious and the notion of the fifth business the title it's explained in the novel at a certain point but it's also explained in the epigraph which comes from i don't know what kind of a book but the fifth business is a character in drama not hero or heroine not confidant nor villain but essential to the plot in drama and opera essential to triggering or bringing to fruition the denouement of the drama and that character was called fifth business so yes dunstable who later became dunny Dun Dunst dunston he was that character he was the narrator but he was a single eccentric weird in many ways emotionally robotic character whose personality limitations stunted the story to the point where it was just an epic failure for me. My opinion, there's not many one-star reviews of this novel on Goodreads, so mine's a minority opinion. And you'll notice that I'm not ranting because I actually am just so relieved. You know, Is relieved the right word? I'm just so glad that I finally gave it a try and found out that it wasn't a piece of sexist shit. It wasn't. But it was a very disappointing novel in its execution for me personally. The narrator, he was one-dimensional in his in the way that he intellectualized everything. And when there were emotional eruptions, I was not convinced. And there were several. But maybe what I'm saying is he's a typical straight man of a certain generation. And he was so emotionally obtuse that he kept forgetting the great love, a certain kind of love. The person he adored the most from his childhood was Mrs. Dempster. But he'd forget about her for years at a time. And when they do reconnect, and I'm not going to give any kind of spoilers, he didn't seem to have any emotions about her, and I didn't find anything to do with their story in the latter half of the novel convincing. In fact, I found it almost enraging in the obtuseness of how it was rendered on the page. And there was many things like that. The men in this book sucked. Men do suck a lot of the time. And they were a product of the limited imagination of the writer. So there's the there's where gender came in. Lots of men are clueless about emotions. That's not my critique here. Wonderful fiction has been written that shows how emotionally obtuse people can be, especially men. But Robertson Davies seemed to be emotionally obtuse in the way that he spun this tale. 
And so there were a lot of crazy dramatic plot twists, and I'm not going to tell you about any of them, but because there was no scaffolding on richly realized characters, I just thought it was far-fetched and stupid. The intellectual interests, uh, hagiography of Dunstan, the narrator, had no visceral tug. I finished it feeling deeply dissatisfied. I'm sure if you've read the novel, statistically, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you probably had a much better experience. So please leave comments so that the people that haven't read it might take your advice and ignore mine. But I really disliked it. And I will not read any more in the series. And I'd be hard-pressed to read any more Robertson Davies. Let me close with... Uh, he, he was such a pompous man. He was about six foot eight and his, just this big Santa Claus beard. His head was about the size of my torso. Here is a clip of him and just listen to his voice and, and tell me how irritating you find him. Well, recently you seem to have abandoned the stage for various forms of prose fiction and of course you've been very successful with your latest novel. I just wonder um, why the shift? Why, why have you moved away from the stage to other forms of writing? Well, there are a variety of reasons, and um, one of them is that the kind of plays that I like to write are not the kind of plays that are uh, <coughs> fashionable or popular anymore, and um, I can't write the sort of plays which are fashionable or popular now because they're in a, in a, a form, or perhaps I should say they... They like any sort of form that I understand. Uh, my idea of theatre is rooted very much in the theatre of the 19th century, which is a theatre where a play has a narrative and a certain amount of comment which is, accompanies the narrative. But th that's not much like now. That is what put me off reading it for 30 years. I'm glad I finally read it, but it didn't land for me at all. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. Oh.